，你就不怕跟他们下场一样吗？The man's name is Choke. He's a very capable killer because he often wore a black suit. It was called the thug and suit by people in the industry. On this day, his wife was blown up and his brother Barton was kidnapped. Choke tracked him to a slaughterhouse where he met a woman in red. A fight ensues. The woman struggles to her feet. Choke took a step to avoid her. The police arrived. He was sent to jail after going to prison. Jokka also used his fists to speak and became the king of the prison. Seven years later, Jokka was released from prison. He came to the cemetery to pay his respects to his dead wife and vowed to catch the real killer. At the same time, his friend Barlow changed his face and became a famous member of the city of Thailand. That day, while he was giving a speech on the street to solicit votes, a sniper was already targeting him. Patton dodged the bullet with his bodyguard. The sniper's position was compromised. Barton had his men shoot back immediately. The gunfire sends the crowd scattering. Barton saw a clown in a suit in the crowd. Patton followed him. The two men meet at a roadside stall. Barton unconsciously brings up the shooting and mentions that he wants Chuck to join him. But now Barton is a congressman, and he's just a poor clown actor who's been to jail before. He's afraid of influencing Barton, so he rejects his offer outright. Barton took out a business card and handed it to him. Hoping that he could contact him if he had any problems. When Joe Keck came home that night, he heard Susie, the guard star, on the news. He had long investigated that Susie was not a simple man. Soon after, he found Susie's daughter, Sulei. He waited for her on her way home from school. When she appeared, Joe Keck took out his gun and aimed it at the back of her head. It turns out that Joe Ka has known her for a long time. They're now friends. After playing a game of ball toss with him, Zulane asked him to go to a parent-child class with her. Before Joe Ka could say yes, Zulane's mother came to see him. They had to say goodbye in a hurry. At that moment, a motorcycle rushed out from the road. Joe Ka suddenly remembered that the man who killed his wife was also riding a motorcycle. Joe Ka realized it didn't have any tattoos on his wrists. Zulane was taken to the car by her mother. Before she left, she asked Joe Ka to come to class with her tomorrow. The next day, Zulane is teased by her classmate Fatty for being alone. At this moment, Joe Ka appears as a clown and makes Fatty cry to help Zulane take revenge. The two of them play ball, tossing together in class. A man claiming to be a colleague of Zuzi's comes to take Zulane away with him. Joe Ka sees the tattoo on the man's wrist and realizes that he is a fake police officer. So he immediately steps forward to subdue him. At the same time, more cops arrived. Joe Ka didn't hesitate to fight with them after he finished them off. Joe Ka saw the tattoos on their wrists and realized that they were all fake cops. Their purpose was to kill Zulane. He immediately took Zulane away. Zulane thinks it's a bad thing to kill a cop. While they were arguing, the killer came after them again. He managed to take care of the killers. A mentally unstable bald man chased after him in a van. Apparently, they're going to get Zulane today. A grenade was thrown over. The man's car was instantly blown up. Just as old Bai was getting cocky, his men told him that there was no Joe Ka in the van. So Joe Ka had already hidden himself. They took the opportunity to pull down the power and started his own night of carnage. Then he put a few bottles of reagents into the microwave to make a simple trap. He intentionally hanged one of his men with a chain. The sound soon attracted the attention of the others. When he heard Bai confess to all his crimes, he couldn't stand it any longer and beat him up before kicking him out of the room. Just as he was about to shoot, Zeus stopped him, saying he would take care of it all himself. Joe Ka had to fire a few shots at the surrounding iron pieces to vent his anger, leaving old Bai with a small life unbeknownst to him. This was the very thing that left him with a hidden danger. Joe Ka returned home to take Zulane home, but Zulane asks him to take her to a costume party at the amusement park. The two of them had a great time at the amusement park. Then Zuzi came to take Zulane away, although Joe Ka was reluctant to let her go. She was someone else's daughter. He could only send Zulane away with a smile on his face. Just as he was about to leave, he saw a sneaky man in a trance. He followed him all the way to the restroom. At that moment, a crippled old bai came over and told him the whole truth. Zulane was actually Joe Ka's daughter. He killed Joe Ka's wife and sent Zulane to be raised by Zuzi. Zuzi is a black cop through and through, and the person who betrayed him back 
than was no other than Joe Kay's good buddy, Barton. After learning the truth, Joe Kay is furious and decides to take care of everyone himself. Zulane, led by Zuzi, comes to the underground parking lot and is attacked by an assassin just as she is about to leave. Zulane is kidnapped again. Meanwhile, Joe Kay is still fighting with Old Bai. After taking care of Old Bai, Joe Kay went to take revenge on Barton. At the entrance, Joe Kay transformed into the god of war with two guns. He threw a couple of grenades inside and started attacking again. After he successfully disposed of the group, they came to him with a dagger in her hand. He said he was in the darkness to save those in the darkness. No one can stop it, including you. After taking care of Xiaomei, Zhou Ke came to Barton and asked him to let Zuling go. But Barton started to brainwash Zhou Ke when he heard that Barton was so crazy. Zhou Ke didn't reply, but fought with him. Although Zhou Ke was Barton's teacher, but the two of them were equally matched, and Zhou Ke was even a little bit defeated. He could only force himself to fight in order to save his daughter. At <laughs> the door opened, Joka saw his daughter. Zuling's body was strapped with bombs. He could only be careful to remove the bombs. At that moment, Arden suddenly appeared and stabbed Joka in the waist, then pressed the bomb switch. L Luckily, he was still alive and limped out with Zuling in his arms. At that moment, gunshots ran out and Joka was shot in the chest. At that moment, Zulane saw the photo Zhou Ke was carrying. The little girl's birthmark on it was exactly the same as his. That's when she realized that her real father had been with her all along. But it was too late. She lost her father forever. Before <laughs> Flying glass shard scratched Joe Ke's cheeks. He held onto Zulane, then pressed the gas pedal to the floor, violently knocking the bald man over. Unfortunately, the bald man's life was strong. He climbed out of the car and used the walkie-talkie to tell his men to catch them both. By now, Joe Ke's car had a flat tire, so he could only take Zulane to the downtown area. In order to hide his face, he took off his headgear and used a knife to cut open a bucket of water, deliberately creating a small area of confusion. The killers on the road were still frantically searching for the two of them, not knowing that Joe Ke had washed off his makeup, put on sunglasses, and changed into a full suit. He also changed Zulane's clothes. The killers also lost them. Joe Ke saw a killer at this time. He had the same tattoo on his wrist. Joe Ke immediately tied him up and asked him what the tattoos meant and who their boss was. The killer only knew that the tender was a symbol of the organization. He doesn't know anything about the boss. He doesn't even know what it looks like. Seeing that he couldn't get anything out of him, Joe Ke had to drag Zulane away first. But just as they left the alley, they bumped into a police woman. Nan Nan, Joe Ke tied her up and then took Zulane to escape. Joe Ke takes her to his home. Zulane thinks he's a bad guy and tells him to turn himself in. Joe Ke carefully explains to him about his dead wife. Knowing everything, Zulane chooses to trust Joe Ke again. Now, Joe Ke needs Zulane to draw out the murderer. He doesn't know what they want from her. As long as Zulane is in his hands, the murderer will take the bait sooner or later. When Zulane started to organize her school bed, Joe Ke found a digital watch. Zulane's mom had left it to him and it had a precise positioning system on it. Joe Kess subconsciously realized that their position was probably exposed. At the same time, Bodhead and his men had already arrived at his house. It turns out that before they arrested Zulane, they had already been to Zuzi's house, turned it upside down, and smothered Zulane's mother with a plastic bag, and they were able to locate Zulane's position in real time through her mother's tablet. Joe Kess locked Zulane in the house for protection. He waited in the hallway with instant noodles for Bodhead and his men to show up. Bodhead soon came over and searched from house to house. Joe Kess who had been waiting in the hallway for a long time, immediately fought with them. When they opened the door to go in, they were silently killed by Zhou Ke, who was so invisible. After Zhou Ke finished off his men, Bald Head appeared on the scene. Zhou Ke tied him up and arranged a massage for him, but he refused to confess. Zhou Ke had to increase his healing power and poured a pot of water on his head. Then he increased the voltage and electrocuted the Bald Head. Bald Head saw that if he didn't say something, he would become an electrocuted kid. He obediently said his boss's name was Old Bai. After getting the news he wanted, Joe Ke immediately dragged Zulane away. Because this place has been exposed, they need a new hiding place. Then also brought the police here, 
but after breaking in, they only saw a couple of tied-up killers. On the other hand, Joe kept Razu Lane to his secret base for a good rest. Meanwhile, Bald had found a chance to escape back to the organization and told Old Bai about Joko's matter. As soon as the other side heard it, they knew that it was the crazy Su Thug who had returned. Zhu Ling gives him her to bears to thank Zhou Ke for his constant protection. Zhou Ke suddenly remembers that Bot had told him that Old Bai had been asking them to look for a USB flash drive. It contained evidence of his crimes, and the flash drive was hidden in the eyes of the bears. Meanwhile, Susie, who disappeared from the police station for days, has returned. He introduced Joe Ke's identity as a killer and information about Old Bai. Old Bai used to work for Jordan. He killed Jordan seven years ago and took over his business. If we follow White's lead, we'll catch Chote. Joe has also found out about White's whereabouts. He left Su Ling alone at the amusement park and broke into White's turf. Under his coercion, he managed to get White's address. Old White was at the pier at the port of Ringo. When Choke arrived, Old Bai wasn't there. He set fire to his place straight away. The news soon reached Shueza. He realized that Choke's target was White, not himself. Then he got a call from Zhou Ke. The two of them want to have a talk tonight because of Zhu Ling's problem. Soon they met at the pier, and Zuzi handed over all the information about Old Bai. The two decided to go to Old Bai's flour mill tomorrow and arrest him together. This is the movie. Thugs in Suits directed by Sun Shea and Dai. The action sequences in the movie are pretty good. Action movies are all about punching, and the fights in this movie are so good that you can't really feel the pain. A variety of difficult martial arts action, fighting, gun battles, explosions full of scenes, very hot action movie.